Hello gamers, this is RushCode, and welcome back to Unreal Engine 4. As you can see, I've put in a few colors here and there, and we built, well, I've actually redone the chair, the table, and the classroom with a few more colors in it. And I've also fixed up the table orientation, and uh, I don't think I did anything with the chair. Let's jump in and see what this looks like. So, last time we worked on placing the chair in the table, so if I walk up to it, the chair places it in the correct orientation now, which is great. And if you go in here, I can do the same thing by walking up to these, and it's oh, so much more beautiful now because of the colors. Uh, don't judge my color scheme, I don't know what I'm picking here myself, but this is what I have. So, what we're going to do today is improve on the placement mechanic for the chairs inside the tables. Right now, what we're doing is every time the pawn walks up to the chair, or to the, sorry, the table, it will spawn a chair based on an overlap. I don't want that because that's that's too easy. This is supposed to be a game. It's supposed to challenge your dexterity, I suppose. So what, what I want to do is make a mechanic such that when you walk up to a chair, oh sorry, when you walk up to a table, the chair will spawn only when you hit uh, like a key on your keyboard. And after this, we'll look at just maybe randomizing some colors as well, just to make everything look a bit better because right now, uh, we only have like a fixed sort of color scheme in here, you know, purple mats and brown tables, blue doors, that sort of thing. So I like to randomize things a bit, so we'll look at that later if we have time. So first things first, let's look at building a mechanic for the chair. So if you go into your custom controller, I don't have any, any stuff here yet. The idea is you would need some kind of custom event to start the whole thing, and that can only come if you have some kind of input. So. If I go to project settings, the first thing I want to do is make an input. So under input, we go to action mappings and press the plus sign uh, and rename this. So we've created a new command here. We're going to call it, uh, we'll call it place chair. And I'll use the letter E to do that. Okay, so now that that is done, I can close this window, go back here and right click for a, uh, oh, not a custom event, but rather the place chair event. Here we go, place chair. Okay, so now that we have this here, the next thing you want to do is connect it to either a, well, like you want to cast it to a table. So if we go and cast to some kind of table, then there's a bit of a problem. We need to somehow get the table actor that we're colliding with. So for example, if you walk into this table over here, you need to know that this is the table you're walking into somehow. So this this table needs to get that information, but we can't get that unless we know what the pawn is doing. So rather than casting there first, let's cast to my pawn. And well, in terms of the object, we just need to get the controlled pawn. And then from there, we want to cast to a table. When we don't want to just cast to any table, right? We need to loop it through something so that we can look through all the tables where overlapping width so for each loop and then as the pawn you want to get all the overlapping actors specifically the table type connect that back in there and then start looping through to find out which one you're supposed to overlap so we're casting to the table we're gonna connect that array element there from here what you want to do is spawn a chair if there isn't one yet so we're not going to get too detailed on whether there is a chair or not to begin with. We're just going to spawn a chair anyway. So let's just get straight into spawning an actor from a class. The class being a chair. And you'll want to specify the location and all that stuff. So split the pin. I think I did something here about this, didn't I? Yeah, spawn actor, a chair, spawn transform location, all this stuff. So I think I can just copy this. So if I copy that and put it over here. That should give me what I need for this. So that's going to be the location. This is going to be the rotation. And that should do it for this chair going to this table. However, it needs to somehow know that it's going to this table. So see, the trouble is this attach point is not part of this table yet. So we're going to get rid of that and pull this out a bit further. We're going to get the chair attach point for this guy and then connect that into both of these. So now we know that it's going to attach to this table. 
whatever table is going through this place. So we're going to compile and let's just see if that works. So here we have a table. I walk up to it. Oh, actually, I need to disable the other mechanic here. So I'm just going to uh, delete these links, compile and play. So walk up to it. Nothing happens. And then as soon as you press E within it, it spawns a chair, which is great. Now, of course, I can keep pressing E. And technically, there's a bunch of chairs in there, but we just can't see them. And that's because I've not created a mechanic to uh, stop spawning chairs if there's already one in there. Which is a problem for another day, I feel. <laughs> but anyway, that's basically the mechanic. It's not complicated in in uh, on the surface, but it can get super complicated when you're trying to work out if there is already a chair there or how many chairs we have and we're trying to keep score, that sort of thing. But this is the essence of putting in a chair. And I think you can use break or completer for other things too. So yeah, there's, there's a bit more to that. But let's move on to randomizing the colors. So in terms of colors, I've already prepared a bunch of different colors here. And what I want to do is randomize the colors of the, I think the table, yeah, like this mat over here. So what I'm going to do is make an array, call it a color array, and we'll need to change the type to, um, I think it's uh, material, material, actually no, it needs to be material instance, because I only created material instances. So all of these colors that I have, these are all instances of the original material. So these are instances over here, like white and red, purple, orange. Um, so we're going to put those colors in here. Right, so if we compile, now we have a default value for this, but I think I need to change this up here. So if I click that and go to, here we go, that's array, and recompile, great. I just need to add elements to it. So I'm just gonna add a few here, and then bring this over here. So I suppose I could put green, um, orange, red, purple, blue, and... I guess we could go with brown too. And now we need to get it to change this color based on this array. So coming back to the event graph, we don't need any of this code anymore. But what we do need is an event begin play, I think. So when the event begins to play, we want to set the material for uh, the mat. And the material is going to be based on this color array. So we drag it in. We'll need to select something randomly. So I think we will just do random. And here we go. So random array from item gets a random item from a specified array. And then that item goes out and that should take care of it. So if we compile and hit play, we should see different matte colors. So this one's orange. The chair will still be whatever color it is. Now in here. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> so we have different matte colors. Nice. And we can just create the chairs as well. And there we go. Now, of course, if you want to create one chair at a time, even if you're overlapping two boxes, then you'd have to do something a bit different with the with the mechanic in, uh, where was it, the controller here. I think you'd have to say something like, as soon as it spawns, then you break. Okay, so if we give that a go and go back in here and stand right in between these two, it will only spawn one of the chairs at a time. So if I go here, spawns that one, then does it spawn this one? Yeah, it does. So, But yeah, it only happens one at a time now, which is good. Okay, so the only other thing to randomize the colors for would be the door. So I want this door color to be a bit different as well. So we're going to make a variable, call it color array, and essentially do the same thing. So I'm going to change this material, uh, change this type to material instance, material instance, get it as an array, compile, add a few elements to it, and then drag in some of these colors. So blue, brown, actually no, uh, I don't think I want to put brown in there because the door frame is also brown. Uh, we can put green, lime, orange, red, and purple. I suppose yeah, we can do purple as well. Actually, we can do white as well. Why not? Oh, beige. Yeah, beige. All right, so same thing on the event begin play. We want to set the material, this time for the door piece itself, and we want the material to be based on the color array. So bring that in, randomize the array item, chuck that into the material, and this should work. Oh, well, we can see this door is orange, and oh, look at that, this door is blue. 
So now we have some nice different randomized colors and it's different every time you start the game. See this table has a brown mat this time. So there you go. And this turned out to be a short video so in the next episode what I want to do is work on uh, some mechanics to do with scoring and also making like a, like a menu system to do with you know like widget blueprints that sort of thing because if you want to make uh, some sort of menu you would go into user interface, create a widget blueprint, and then from there, you can create uh, like a like a start screen or a pause menu or a, like a quit game game over screen that sort of thing. So yeah, looking forward to doing that with you guys in the next video. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. And if you liked it, smash like, hit subscribe, join the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Rush code out.